On my hand here is the 7200F 2.8 Z mount lens. I purchased it uh, quite close to when I purchased the Z9, so it has been with me for some time. And today I finally want to do a review on it. As with my reviews, I normally do quite a little bit of photo shoots with them before I actually bring it out because uh, only through the photo shoots can I give you real world experience on how I feel with this lens on my hand doing portraiture. Without further ado, let's review this lens, the Nikon 7200F 2.8. Now, I'm Richard, welcome to Zappy Productions. I'm a portrait photographer. You have seen the photos that I shot with this lens so far. Now, this lens here is a very nice lens and I, would, I really don't want to waste any more time and let's talk about this lens itself. Firstly, when it comes to build quality, this lens is built like what you expect from 7200 from many years ago. Now, the thing is that the later 7200s are a lot lighter, especially from Sony and Canon. And Canon and Tamron even have the retractable type of a lens, which some don't like. So the Nikon Z lens here is built like traditional ones, which is two rings, or should I say three rings. There is one more control ring behind. Three rings here, non-retractable, non-rotating. So the lens is very, very well built. Now the lens have a tripod collar here. And this tripod collar is non-removable. As you can see here, it's non-removable. It cannot be removed. You can actually attach and detach the tripod feet. And now I mount it with a uh, rail here. So pretty much, you know, it's a non-removable thing. So you can only save that much weight. The advantage of having such a tripod collar, however, is that this is a lot smoother than what I remembered from almost any other 7200s out there. Most 7200s collars are actually a bit rough. And this is really smooth. So I, I do quite like it, you know. Now, this 7200, to show you that it is a really modern mirrorless lens, firstly, this uh, focusing ring has no hard stops, showing you that this is the modern type of uh, either stepless or linear motor type of lens, so no hard stops. And secondly, it has a digital screen here, which shows you three different things, the focal length, the aperture, and the depth of field, depending on what you do by pressing the display button here. So it's a really nice touch on this lens itself, so you can know precisely how many millimeters are you shooting, or what aperture are you shooting, or the depth of field you're shooting, just by pressing the button and seeing the monitor here. So it's a nice touch. Now the lens is a 77mm filter, and of course this is a weather sealed lens, so it has a rubber gasket behind. So it is overall what you expect out of a 7200 for many years, many many years. Now one thing about the hood is that this hood is the type I like, which uses a button to lock rather than friction. So once you turn it up, you hear the click, it doesn't spin out no matter how much strength you use, unless you break the lock itself. If not, just press a button, it comes out very smoothly. So overall, I think the build quality of the 7200 f2.8 here is a very nice nice one as what you expect out of a professional 7200 lens. Even though it's a little bit heavy, just to note that this is 300 grams more than the Canon and the Sony versions, um, but you know, the Z9 is probably the bigger weight increment than the lens itself. So that's about it for build, now let's talk about usability in the field. Firstly, I would say as this lens is really usable in the field, firstly there's a lot of buttons, you can customise it to however you want and there's also a ring behind you know, to customise it whatever you want. But that said, I tend not to customise this ring because I tend to hold my lens at the back near the camera and this result me in turning that ring, uh, not noticing it and then changing my aperture which I really dislike. While the buttons in the front and the side allows me to you know, tweak according to what I want and then uh, lock the lens or stop its focusing or initiate autofocus depending on what I set on those buttons itself. The zoom rings uh, and the focus rings are very smooth. I don't use the focus ring much because this is a focus by wire lens. But the zoom ring I do use quite a bit and it is quite easy to turn. Using one hand you can actually quite easily turn this lens itself which is really nice. Now, the display itself, even though I did talk about it just now in build quality, it's a nice touch, but in real world, I don't actually utilize it that much, so that's something to note. Now, the lens itself has nothing much to say. It has a AF, MF, and then it has the switch behind, but really, in terms of usability, there is really nothing much else to talk about. Now, when it comes to image stabilization, there is two modes here, and you have to set it in the camera, not on the lens itself. And the first mode is VR standard, and the second mode is sports VR. I did touch on this topic before, and with Nikon lenses, the VR mode tends to have a very sudden shake when you take the photo itself. This sudden shake is because I went to read up, and Nikon says it's because it's centering the lens first before taking a shot. But as somebody said, this is for the first time a system that doesn't take what I want to take. You know, it doesn't give me 
me the frame I want the frame. It gives me a frame of whatever I want because by centering the lens when it's initializing the image stabilization module inside uh, before the shot, uh, it kind of like spoil my framing by just that 5% at the corner there. It's quite irritating. Of course, you can disable that and use Sports VR, but what happens is that you get a lot less effective image stabilization. This lens gives me image stabilization at about 120 of a shutter, uh, but if I use Sports VR, I can probably only go into like 140, 150, and below that is a little bit unstable. So, image stabilization wise, nothing too fancy. Uh, it's probably. If you ask me, because of its sudden jitter when it shoots, um, probably the lowest rated image stabilization among all 7200s I have used so far. Now, when it comes to autofocus, however, this is very reliable, and in fact, the most reliable lens I've tried with the Z9. It can pretty much shoot in many, many uh, conditions where subjects are moving towards you quickly, subjects are moving sideways. In fact, I have a whole autofocus video. You can take a look at the link up here. I won't talk about it in this video anymore. It is very reliable. You will definitely get what you want. Even if the subject is moving towards you like a motorbike at 50 km per hour, you will still capture almost, almost every frame sharp with the 7200 and the Nikon Z9. So autofocus is very reliable on this lens itself. Now, that's pretty much it. And uh, the next section will be on image quality. Now, image quality wise, I'll tell you that the 7200, the reason why I even buy a 7200 because I usually don't buy them, it's because this lens is really sharp. It is sharp in the center, sharp in the corner, wide open, be it 70 millimeters and 200 millimeters itself. The only disadvantage is that uh, you can see that the vignetting is quite obvious at 2.8, regardless if it's 70 mm or 200 mm. Uh, so that is something to note here. Now, stopping it down reduces the vignetting significantly and thus increase your corner sharpness by a touch to really make it almost perfect at f4. But if you are not going to stop down, that is fine. As a portrait photographer, uh, f2.8, uh, sharp all the way to 3 quarter of the frame is more than what I need. Uh, pretty much this lens do deliver when it comes to sharpness itself. Also note that if you see in the day scene, there is no chromatic aberration anywhere and the lens is really quite flat in terms of rendering sharpness. I noticed that most of the frame is sharp evenly throughout because I'm shooting at a subject, a building that is like 2 kilometers away. Or is it wait, wrong? one plus kilometers away. Okay, now that is on sharpness itself. The next thing uh, let's talk about is when you shoot night scenes. So when you shoot night scene, the first thing you can actually see is this chromatic aberration uh, when you meet very strong light and then very uh, dark areas. And you can see in these light tubes here, this chromatic aberration of the lens is really good. It is probably one of the best chromatic aberration that I've seen so far on the lens, especially on a zoom lens. It is almost perfect if you ask me. Now, there is a little bit of coma at 70mm or 200mm and uh, I don't think that's a big deal. Uh, especially with this lens, I don't think most people will use it to shoot astrophotography. Some will, but at least for me, I won't. Now, the next thing you will look at is the bokeh balls. And the bokeh balls of this lens, uh, it is quite smooth inside the ball itself, but the edge is quite pronounced. It is quite a very sharp edge that doesn't blend with the other balls. So, you will notice that later in the actual photos that I shoot, the bokeh itself uh, overall is, I would say it's not the smoothest and it has a little bit of edge to it, at least that's my feeling on this lens itself. It gives quite a lot of texture and at times it can be quite nice, at times it can be quite distracting. The last thing I will talk about is sun stars. I have nothing much to say. Take a look at the photos here and you pretty much see I, I really don't know how to gauge a good sun star from a bad sun star. So no opinions on those things. Now, overall, the image quality when it comes to synthetic test is quite good. I have no complaints on it and pretty much I don't think anybody who utilize this lens will have complained on it from the optical standpoint. Now, let's talk about real world experience, image quality in real world where you shoot portraiture. I would say this lens is fantastic. Very, very sharp in where you focus, be it on the center, be it off center, be it really almost near the corner because sometimes you do do that stuff. Uh, overall, I don't have any complaints and when you shoot studio, you stop down the f4, f5.6, it is extremely, extremely sharp. So overall, the quality of the lens is fantastic and because the chromatic aberration control is so good, I can shoot with back littered, side littered, uh, pretty much <laughs> even when you have very strong contrast, I don't notice any chromatic aberration with this lens, making it one of the most, I would say, it's perfect lens I have used, even slightly better than some even prime lens if you ask me. 
Now, the only downside of this lens is the bokeh, or depends really on what you do. The bokeh at times can be a little bit rough, especially if it's foliage and small leaves. Uh, it really doesn't look that, I would say, as pleasing to me. Uh, but if you shoot it with the subjects close enough to you and the background far enough away, you normally get a relatively smooth background as you expect out of a 200mm lens. But if you do shoot full body and then uh, cityscape, the lines are quite pronounced, but these lines can be utilized to give you texture to the background. In fact, this particular shot here, you can see I quite like the texture, even though yes, it's not like blown out bokeh, but it gives a very nice feel to the background itself. So overall, the bokeh itself, I wouldn't say this is nicest bokeh. In fact, I think this is one of the uh, not so nice bokeh already, but if you know how to utilize it and you know how to uh, or say as uh, control your background a little bit more. I would say as the bokeh is quite acceptable and it can actually be used for artistic purpose. Just to say again, uh, most people will not judge your photo based on bokeh anyway. So uh, you probably should worry about more things other than bokeh. However, because this is a 7200mm at f2.8, uh, bokeh is something we have to consider if you are the type like to shoot wide open. Now that is really about it, my experience shooting in uh, real world. Overall, I think that this lens is very capable when it comes to image quality as a portrait lens. And uh, as long as you set enough of a shutter speed on your Z9 or whatever Nikon camera you're using, you should be able to get very tech sharp shots with this lens here easily. <laughs> easily, that's what I would say. Now, I want to talk about one last thing before I give my final thoughts, and that is on video. So video, I will test two things, par focal and focus breathing. Now, in terms of par focal wise, this lens is totally not par focal. I zoom in at 200mm, I focus the shot, and I zoom out, it will be out of focus. So it is not par focal in any way. And when it comes to focus breathing, uh, I think there is some slight focus breathing, but overall it is very well controlled, be it at 70mm or 200mm, it is very well controlled when it comes to focus breathing itself. So I do not know is this bad or good, I guess for focus breathing, yes it's good, but for par focus, not so much, it is quite, if you ask me, off focus the moment you zoom out. In fact, in the middle of the zoom, you can tell that it's totally off focus. So overall, pretty much for video, this is what you should consider in this 7200mm lens. Now, in my final conclusion, should you buy the 7200 f2.8 Z lens? Based on my experience so far with this camera, the Z9 and you know adapted lens, I find that the adaptation on this camera isn't just as good as using native lens. So if you are into 7200 and you kind of want the best performance, the 7200 f2.8 Z mount is the best performing one. Uh, you know, pretty much it's just better because it's native to the Z mount itself. Now, if you don't care about that, of course, you can buy the older 7200s f2.8 version 2s and the FLs and what's not. They will save you some money. They do have very good image quality, but the autofocus itself, I'm not too sure. I have not used them before, but my experience with the FTZ and the Z mount just isn't as good as what you get out of, uh, let's say, the R3 and the EF mount and adapter itself. And that's really about it. This is my review of the 7200 f2.8 lens from a portrait photographer point of view. I think this is a really good lens and if you are into this range itself, I think this lens will not disappoint you except maybe for the bokeh if you are the type that really likes to look at smooth battery stuff. If you are into the smooth battery stuff, get an 85 1.4 or maybe uh, 105 f1.4. Those will give you the battery stuff. That's about it. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.